All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, ever since LeBron James first emerged on the NBA scene in 2003, he's been compared to two former NBA legends, that being Michael Jordan, because as LeBron James has always stated, Michael Jordan was his hero as a child, and also he wears Michael Jordan's number. And the other player that LeBron has been compared to has been Irvin Magic Johnson. If you let the NBA pundits on television tell you, at least according to the narrative that they try to push pertaining to LeBron James, LeBron is so magic-like. He's so unselfish out there on the basketball floor, and he makes everyone better. I've never bought into that. Whenever I watch LeBron James play, I think Oscar Robertson 2.0, a player who wants to control every aspect of the team, both offensively and defensively, has difficulty being told that he's not quite as smart as he thinks he is, and has always had to have an excessive amount of help in order to win an NBA title. That's who LeBron James is to me. He's Oscar Robertson 2.0, an all-time great, but not Magic Johnson and certainly not Michael Jordan. Well, in the mind of LeBron James, I think that he thought that he was Magic Johnson as well, or at the very least should be considered on Magic Johnson's level in Los Angeles. Because according to him, he believed that Magic Johnson owed him an explanation when he ducked out on the Lakers organization and told no one, not even the owner. So what is it actually that LeBron James was really saying? when he says that Magic Johnson never called him, never said anything to him. What LeBron's really saying is that he believes that he's above Jeannie Buss on the Laker hierarchy, or at least he thinks that he should be in the mind of Magic Johnson. I'm of the firm belief that Magic Johnson at the point when he decided to step down or when he was prompted to step down, no longer knew who he could trust, and that includes LeBron James. I truly believe that Magic Johnson thought that LeBron James may have been in on it with Jeannie Buss and Rob Palenka and everyone else. And that can happen sometimes, especially, <laughs> especially in that corporate environment. Magic is someone that, as I've always told you, brothers, he gets on TV and talks about all his businesses and this and that. All Magic has ever been is a mascot. That's all he is in his other business ventures. That's what he was with the Lakers. But he thought that since basketball is his expertise, that Jeannie Buss would trust him to have shot caller status. And when he realized he didn't, that was truly a blemish to his massive ego. And if you're Magic Johnson, of course you're going to have a massive ego. Well, LeBron James' number one fan has decided that he's going to, as usual, stick up for his boo thing, LeBron James. So they're going to talk about it and I'm going to chime in. Uh, next up, Magic Johnson surprised everyone by stepping down as Lakers president last month. It clearly shocked LeBron, who talked about Magic's departure on his show, The Shop. Let's take a listen. A right hand comes to me and say, Matt, Magic just stepped down. And I'm like, man, on my face, you. I go check my phone. So, in other words, you verbally abuse all, all of your assistants. That's, that's what you're saying. Check my phone, I look at it, happened. Personally, for me, I came here to be a part of the Lakers organization, having a conversation with Magic. Bullshit, Negro. You were coming to the Lakers regardless. The reason why you signed with L.A. was because you hoped to be able to reinvigorate that franchise. You wanted to add your name into the Laker pantheon of all-time greats. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Walt Chamberlain, Magic Johnson, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, Kobe Bryant. You knew that if you came to the Lakers and were able to bring them another title or two, people would no longer be able to say that Kobe Bryant was better than you. In addition to that, you were able to calculate that if you were to pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar on the all-time points scored list, it would probably be in your last year with LA. So it truly was all about you. And on top of that, let's not forget, in LeBron's fourth season, he has a very good chance of passing Magic Johnson on the all-time assist ranks as well. So just over the course of these next four years, he might pass, well, he is going to pass Kobe Bryant in scoring. He could pass Magic Johnson in assists. And he might even pass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in points. LeBron has strategically laid out this career pathway for him where he could show up all of the former Laker greats and on top of that, maybe even win a championship. And that's just the basketball perspective. That's the, that's the basketball aspect. The off the court aspect is the real reason why LeBron wants to be in LA. That's to cement all of his relationships with the Hollywood big wigs and to make sure that he appeases his Kabbalistic overlords out there <laughs> in the city of angels, which is really the city of demons. So it was just weird for him to just be like, I'm out of here. And not even have no like, hey, Bron, kiss my I'm gone. It's not, it wasn't even that. Maybe he didn't trust you. Did you give him reason to not trust you? All right, we finally heard from him. Shannon, what does this tell you? You know what, Jenny? 
I mean, honestly, uh, Skip, and bear with me, because I'm, I'm really, I'm hot right now. I'm hotter than a mosquito sucking blood out of an elephant's ass in the summertime on a Serengeti, Skip. I'm mad as hell, so bear with me. He tell you that he was upset. He was like, Magic, you came to my house before free agency, saw my driveway for an hour or two hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spent another three hours inside of my house convincing me that this was the right play for me. Mm -hmm. Skip Bayless, what that tells me, and also what it tells our family, is that Magic Johnson was full of shit. He was full of shit. He came by our house that day. We told him, stop by our crib at 7 p.m. at our palatial estate. This nigga get there at 7 a.m. Sit out in the driveway for 12 hours, looking stupid. I look at Brian and say, this is who you want to sign with, are you sure? And he said, yeah, baby. I said, okay, it's up to you, but I don't trust his ass. Then on top of that, come to find out, there's nothing magic about this dude. The man has no magical powers at all. He can't even tell Rob Palenka what to do. So Skip, right now our family is in shambles. I'm really highly upset. As you can see, I have on this teal colored blazer because I'm hoping it'll change my mood. But right now we're discussing trades, Skip. Our family's discussing trades. So we might have to move the show undisputed to another location. I just want you to know. Tell you that he was upset. He was like, Magic, you came to my house before free agency, saw my driveway for an hour or two hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Spent another three hours inside of my house convincing me that this was the right play for me. Mm -hmm. And you and I to Skip, I've never met a man talk more than me. Magic Johnson sat in our living room. We already told Magic we're gonna sign, and he's still talking. I couldn't believe the shit. Together, we're gonna bring the Lakers back to Showtime. You're one of the main reasons that I came here. He said that was, we, he didn't say that was the, the only reason, but it was one of the main sure. reasons. Mm -hmm. Bring, get the Lakers back to what the Lakers used to be, the old Showtime Lakers. Mm -hmm. Magic and LeBron joined in to help, this is what's gonna happen. And you didn't even have the common courtesy of, hey, Brian, hey, check this out, bro. Um, there's some things that happen and uh, I'm gonna step down. You couldn't give him that. He has to find that out the, the, through the media, through Randy. He's right, he's right, he's talking about, he's talking about Randy Mims. Yeah, Skip. Well, LeBron said his right hand, he's talking about Randy. Now, if he had said his right foot, he's talking about me. Because that's the foot he put up people's ass when they pissed him off. That's me. That's why I stay on your ass every day. Because I do what LeBron tell me to do. You know what, Skip? I really tired of this shit. So what is LeBron? Well, I, I thought Maverick was his right hand, man. But whatever. What 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 no, Maverick is the person who wheels and deals in Hollywood. Because <laughs> Maverick is someone who's able to win people over because he's a great conversationalist. That's why, that's why Maverick and Magic Johnson got along so well. But Randy is the person who, you know, basically makes sure that LeBron is kept up to speed on what's going on around him. But at the end of the day, it's very clear to me that the reason why Magic Johnson did not contact LeBron at all is one of two reasons. Either Magic does not trust LeBron on a personal level, or number two, maybe he was trying to do LeBron James a favor and not make him privy to information where the media might question LeBron and say, if you know about this, how come you kept it from Jeannie Buss? How come you kept it from Rapalinga? Because you know how the media can spin things. So that's another reason why Magic Johnson may have kept LeBron James out of it. Okay. It's the, the four horsemen. No, I know, I got it. He was just sort of yeah, throwing him yeah. He thought it was that a joke. Up. Yeah, Skip, it's the four horsemen. And me, I'm the last jackass. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm sure he got... He has nicknames and terminology for all of them. My right hand. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. But anyway, what if what if LeBron would have signed with the Lakers and Magic finds out through the media? I'm sure he gave Magic the head up. Magic, I'm going I'm to... Well, it's pretty difficult for that to have happened, Shannon Sharp, especially since <laughs> Magic Johnson was the point man for that entire issue. So that's not a particularly good analogy, but I understand what you're trying to get at. I will say this, though. At the point where the Lakers were trying to woo LeBron James... They were so desperate that I don't think that Magic would have cared if LeBron had signed with them without letting him know. I'm going to do this. It's true. I, I'm, Magic hears this from the Lakers. Come on, Skip. You know, it also tells me that I don't know how much thought Magic is it, like. Maybe he got a hold of this. The, the text message between Rob Palenka and Jenny Buss, maybe he got that on a... Maybe he got wind of this after he had the meeting because it was reported, Skip. He had a sit down with Rich Paul and LeBron James. And none of this came up. Yeah, this was true. not even even close to being a, 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 a topic of conversation. Mm -mm. And then, what, 48 hours later, unprompted, Magic is out there talking about, I I'm not going to be here next year. As you well, Shannon Sharp, that's how you know that something must have happened. Something traumatic must have happened in that intermediate period from the time that he sat down with LeBron and Rich Paul and the time that he decided to hang it up. That's why I'm of the firm belief that it's, it's highly possible that he had a conversation with Jeannie Buss where Jeannie Buss let him know that his time was coming to an end and that maybe 
he can make it look like he was going to quit on the team and they could stage this whole thing. I'm not saying that that, that is what occurred, but it's highly possible because it's very clear to me that Magic Johnson was not in the long term plans of the L.A. Lakers organization. They no longer felt like he was relevant. He was starting to become an eyesore and they were going to move more towards the Kobe Bryant vision of the team. And Rob Palenka is the plant for Kobe Bryant. You say deuces. Yeah, he, right? <laughs> he, just, he just gave him 22 of an hour. He did. And LeBron was like, come on, bro, you can't yeah. give me hell. Hey, hey bro, you, 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 man, you, you stake up the joint. I'm, I'm out of here. LeBron said, you couldn't even give me that courtesy, bro, kiss my butt. Yep. Skip, I'm so upset. I mean, I really can't believe this shit. I went to the bathroom. I took all the toilet tissue off the roll. And I just put Magic Johnson's jersey on the roller, Skip. That's what I've been using for the last week or so. You know, just whenever I got to go do a number two on the commode, I got Magic Johnson jersey there. I'm so mad. It's all professional. So I can get, he's frustrated, Skip. And here's what was what's frustrating, it seems to me. Yeah, he's disappointed that Magic didn't give him the heads up. Yeah, I'm sure he's probably disappointed Magic left. But had he left with the top, the hierarchy on a firm foundation, mm -hmm. he would have no problem. Well, Shannon Sharp, I have news for you. If the hierarchy was on a firm foundation, they never would have needed Magic Johnson in the first place. If the hierarchy was on a firm foundation while Magic was there, he never would have left. Magic wanted to be at the forefront of the Lakers' revival. He wanted to be there on the dais with the rest of the team when they accepted the Larry O'Brien trophy for winning another championship. Magic wanted to be at the forefront of that. He was not going to stand down if everything was functional. The only thing that was going to make Magic Johnson stand down or quote unquote quit in the first place would have been a high level of dysfunctionality. A guy stepping away and you in the Spurs organization, you cool. Guy steps away in what we think of the Golden State, you cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Magic Johnson steps away with the Lakers and it seems G G Genie don't know where the coming or going. Genie knows exactly what is going on. Genie Bust no longer wanted Magic Johnson there in the first place. He was extra baggage. That's all that was. The only reason why she brought Magic in in the first place is because he was simple minded and she thought that he would be able to assist the team in building up a stronger rapport with the media and with the fan base. OK, Magic is here now. Everything is OK. Everybody loves Magic. We're going to hold this over until we actually get people in here who know what they're doing and who are willing to work. Magic Johnson never had a real job in his adult life ever. And that's why I repeatedly say this notion that Magic is this wonderful businessman who wheels and deals. No, actually what he is is the most lucrative mascot of all time. And he tried to run the mascot act with the Lakers. And it was not going to work because he was not willing to put in the time that they demanded of him to make sure that they turned things around. No, you were not going to be able to jet set while trying to rebuild that franchise because there are high expectations for that franchise. Magic Johnson knows he can go speak to many of his uh, sponsors with whatever other business ventures that he's a part of, whether it be Magic Johnson Theaters or Starbucks, etc. And he knows that they're going to work with him because he's highly valuable to them as a pitch man, as someone to, to act as the face of their product. But with the Lakers, they don't need a face for their product. They needed someone who was going to be able to, to, to mollify some of the you know some of that acerbic energy that was existing in the city they needed someone like a magic johnson there who was going to make the people feel comfortable for a while and of course Jeannie bus in the recesses of her mind hoped that magic could actually be professional but she's known this guy for damn near 40 years if not 40 years on the dot she knows that magic is incompetent nothing against magic johnson but i mean come on what else has he ever done in his life that has shown you that he's competent in a position of leadership other than acting as the point guard of the LA Lakers. He wasn't a good coach. He wasn't a good talk show host. He wasn't a good NBA commentator. He wasn't good as an NBA panelist. He just wasn't good. The only things that he's ever been good at for the most part is basketball, tweeting, and acting as the front for an organization. That's it. You got Linda Rambis, you got Kurt weighing in with his two cents. And then you got Rob Pelinka, one of the most hated men in the NBA, running your organization. Bro, like, bro what the hell I got myself into? Mm. Right, but what does that say about LeBron James? <laughs> this notion, once again, I'm trying to make LeBron James out to be the victim. As I've stated, he was a free agent. Wherever he signs is a reflection of him as much as it is the organization. He knew that he was going somewhere where they had a GM who, you know, who was a, a novice at what he was doing, Rob Pelinka. He knew that Magic Johnson was someone who just talks a good game. Did he really think that Magic was a great businessman or a great leader? I mean, come on. 
that's how you know that LeBron is in LA for his own purposes. And this is actually good for LeBron because it takes a lot of attention away from the dysfunctional aspect or the, or the dysfunctional energy that LeBron brings into the building. Now they can blame everything on Magic and Rob Palenka for now. Well, we all know that it's really LeBron James who's hurting and toxifying the locker room. So this is good for him. But as, but as I've already stated, LeBron was a free agent. He could have signed with the Spurs if he wanted to. He could have went somewhere else where the team actually had a real chance of winning. The Philadelphia 76ers wanted him. He didn't go there. There were teams that he could have went to if he truly was as concerned as, as a lot of his boy toys in the NBA media try to act like he is with winning or playing under a big-time coach. LeBron is full of shit. He knows that the LeBron James show is coming to an end over the next three years, and he's going to do him. There's nothing wrong with that, but let's not try to act like LeBron is someone searching out a high-level front office and a great coach, because he's not. But what was most telling, Skip, do you see the difference between LeBron and Lonzo? Lonzo was like, man, this man couldn't even give me the heads up what's going on. Zo was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, hey, cool. What we got going on tonight? Mm -hmm. You see the two differences in <laughs> where they are and, 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 and what basketball means to them currently? Yeah, that's actually a good are you sure that that's a reflection of that, Shannon Sharp? Or is it that Lonzo Ball just understands that at the end of the day, whether Magic Johnson is in the building or not, they still have to perform out there on the basketball floor? Maybe that's more of a reflection of LeBron James trying to put out the front or the energy that he's concerned about basketball when in all actuality, LeBron James is hanging out in these L.A. streets as much as Kuz or Lonzo Ball is. Maybe Lonzo Ball is just not as good an actor as LeBron James is. They set Lonzo over on the couch in the barbershop. He, he didn't get a chair. But you know, that, that a lot of times, those, those are the guys. Mm, that, that's, that's the guy, that, that's the guy cause I, 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 I know, the barbershop. I know, I'm always a, I'm I, got a, I got it. Yeah, Skip. When I go to the barbershop, very rarely I even get a haircut. I mean, shit, my hair just stays the same. It's been the same since 1973. I don't really even need a cut. I just put a part in my hair every three weeks. I do that myself. I go to the barbershop just to talk shit. You know, sometimes I tell everybody how Braun is doing. Things of that nature. You did not mention what I consider the flashpoint line in LeBron's response. The money quote. The most enlightening line of all was what he said about magic. He said... He didn't even call me to say, hey, Bron, kiss, I'm just going to say the word, because he said it, kiss my ass, yeah. I'm out of here. And LeBron concludes, I would have been okay with that. He is concluding that Magic completely turned on LeBron, right? That for whatever reason... Well, that seems to be what LeBron James is implying. What LeBron's implying is that he's surprised that Magic Johnson would not have at least kept him up to speed. Because LeBron believes that Magic Johnson should look at him as, as them two being on an equivalent level. And that's why, that's why I state repeatedly, especially when I list my, my top NBA players, I have Magic Johnson at four, I have LeBron James at six. Magic can talk all the shit that he wants to publicly about how this person is better than him and LeBron's the greatest. And, that, and Magic Johnson's mind, he believes that he's the greatest basketball player ever. And of all the NBA players in the history of the league, other than Kareem and Bill Russell, in my view, Magic Johnson has the actual best case against Michael Jordan, other than those two other players, to try to claim that he's the greatest player ever because his impact was unbelievable. He only played 12 seasons with the Lakers, at least in his initial career. And the things that he was able to do basically every year of his 12-year career, they, they were real actual threats to win the NBA Finals. Larry Bird can't even say that. Michael Jordan certainly can't say that. So the winning component that Magic Johnson brought to the Lakers is something that we have not seen from any other player in the history of the NBA other than maybe Tim Duncan and Bill Russell. As far as players who, from, from the jump, their team was considered a competitor for world title. Reason He was out on LeBron. Sure. And this also drives home the point that Magic didn't wait a day or two to call and try to clear the air with LeBron yeah. after the smoke cleared. Right. Absolutely. That's a great point by Skip Bayless. Magic just did not even come. <laughs> Magic didn't bother with LeBron James at all. That's a great point. It wasn't like he waited two days and then called LeBron and said, look, LeBron, I'm sorry. I didn't contact you. I understand why you might be upset. I just wanted to keep you out of it. He just left it alone. That's a good point. There was no call right. or LeBron still wouldn't be a little offended, if not a lot offended, right. that he didn't get any call. Right. So Magic didn't even call him day two, three or four after he said he was talking to Jeannie every day after that. We talked to you every day, told TMZ, mm -hmm. right?
Once again, that's Magic's way of letting LeBron James know, you're not on my level. He cut the cord. He cut ties with LeBron James. And I can only conclude, be, be, uh, feel free to disagree. I think he's out on LeBron because LeBron disappointed him this year on many levels. That there might be a bit of that. I think that Magic Johnson brought LeBron in, thinking that LeBron James was going to bring a lot of winning habits to the team. And I think that he realized that a lot of LeBron James's habits were more me-oriented than empowering his teammates oriented. That's why I've stated I've, I've never seen this nonsense that the media has tried to push and promote this narrative of LeBron James being someone who empowers his teammates and makes them play better. As a matter of fact, if you look over the course of LeBron James's career, for the most part, many of his teammates' stats have gone down other than Kyrie Irving's. Kyrie Irving's stats are the only great offensive player that LeBron has played with whose stats have actually gotten better. And that's because LeBron realized that he was starting to age a little bit and he transferred some of the energy of the offense over to Kyrie, who he wanted to utilize basically just as a scoring weapon. Kyrie no longer wanted to be utilized in that capacity and that's why he left the Cleveland Cavaliers. That he didn't bring it the way Magic wanted him to bring it for $36 million. That he didn't show the commitment, the body language, the ability to close. The leadership. When you come, when you come to the Staples Center, what a damn flagon of wine. I mean, come on, man. What are you really saying? That, that he tried to strong arm the organization. I guess Magic felt like he actually got preempted by their attempt to pull off and, and sort of flex and control the league and pull off the trade for Anthony Davis. It sounds like Magic was out of that loop, right? He may have been. That's highly possible. There's no doubt that Rich Paul and LeBron James, they were trying to strong arm people. And that's why, once again, that's why Adam Silver decided that he was going to plant David Griffin into a very strategic position with the New Orleans Pelicans so that he could act as the cleanup guy. Because Adam Silver needs LeBron James to be a storyline in, in next year's NBA playoffs. He needs that, especially in LeBron's last three years or so in the NBA. There's still some juice left in that orange, and Adam Silver is going to make sure that it gets squeezed out. You can't have LeBron James sitting home again in next year's NBA playoffs. No way. So... He has David Griffin under the understanding or with the understanding that, that, look, your job is to try to get Anthony Davis to the Lakers. All right. We have to make it look good. I'm going to give you the number one overall draft pick. You're going to get Zion. So hopefully that will appease everyone in New Orleans. From there, even if you have to bring in a third team, we want you to try to get Anthony Davis to L.A. because he's the only other great player in the NBA who actually wants to play with LeBron. So let's hope that. You can get that deal done if you can't. I understand if there's another team with that much greater of a deal on the table. I understand. But try to get the deal done with L.A. And hopefully they can also sign a Jimmy Butler or what have you. And that should make the Lakers competitive enough to possibly be able to win a championship. That's all I really want. I want the Lakers to go into next season with a two or three C type of team. And then we'll see what happens. But we need all these all these chess pieces on the board come next April when the playoffs start. That's Adam Silver in a nutshell, in my view, when it comes to the message that he wants to get across to, to David Griffin and what his job is. I mean, it's hard for me to believe that they're going to try to pull a, pull a, a trade without Magic being privy to it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they can, hey, Magic, what, what you think about it? I mean, we, we probably... I, I don't beat. know. I, I don't know if he was because if he... No, I think that Magic was privy to it. I just think that, I mean, it's a possibility that he wasn't, but I believe that he was. I just think that it was being commandeered by Rich Paul and LeBron. I think that Magic Johnson was doing what he believed would make LeBron happy. And it ended up just being <laughs> a full bar type of situation. And Magic realized he was going to have power on his face because now the young guys don't want to play with LeBron anymore. And it's like, damn, what am I going to do now? And then he comes to find out that Jeannie Buss and Rob Polinka are blaming him for a lot of the incompetence. If he was that close, if he felt that good about it, he would have called LeBron. And again, he doesn't have to give him a pre, you know, preemptive heads right, up. Yeah. But he, he just calls him later that night well, after you, the game and says, hey, I just want you to know I appreciate everything you've done. For right. Me. And you don't have to go into great detail on why you're leaving. Yep. Just say some things came up, bro, you know, hey, family. You know, like, the, the, Skip, you know, the old family thing. I want to spend more time with family. You know how they do it, Skip, when something come up, you don't want to tell anybody, you know. Once again, Shay Sharp, what does it tell you? What does it tell you that Magic Johnson did not even do that? It's very clear that Magic has not as high a regard for LeBron James as you do. 
in the same way that, you know, other people might be in awe of Rob Gronkowski or Tony Gonzalez. But to you, they're just great players because you consider yourself to be better than them. It's that same dynamic with Magic Johnson and LeBron James. You know, I want to spend more time with my family, you know, blah, 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 okay. and get to that. But you, you owe it. I believe, I feel, given LeBron's stature and given what you did to get it, Skip, like I said. You mean given LeBron's stature as you esteem it to be, not as Magic Johnson esteems it to be. Magic Johnson, once more, is a Mount Rushmore player. In my view, LeBron James is not a Mount Rushmore player. There's only room for four faces on Mount Rushmore. And that's Michael Jordan, Kareem, Bill Russell, Magic Johnson. I can't put LeBron James on Mount Rushmore. He only has three titles. He's three and six in the finals. Like I said, the man was sitting in the driveway. And then he spent another three hours talking to him. I, I got and that. You, and, like LeBron and Skip, on top of that, the nigga spent another three hours eating up all our food. I mean, I couldn't believe I opened up the refrigerator, the number of tumbleweeds in the damn refrigerator, Skip. Magic Johnson at the table talking and eating. And I got to go to bed hungry with my stomach growling. I'm mad as hell. LeBron was clearly hurt over yeah, that. Sure. And like you said, even though, okay, you don't give me the, the heads up, but three, four days later, hey, Bron, I'm sorry that mm -hmm. it came with this, but man, but something really came up that I felt that uh, I just needed to take a step away from the game. I and Skip, I know for a fact because me and Bron have had relationship issues in the past. Me, him, and Savannah, and I had to tell him, uh, look, it's not going to work out right now. The season is starting. I have to get prepared for the Broncos. I have to go. You guys not acting right. When I get the respect I feel like I deserve in this household for standing up for our family, I'll be back. I've had to have that talk with LeBron in the past. If I can do it, Magic could did it. I appreciate what you've done. I appreciate you coming to the Lakers. I wish you and the Lakers all the best. I'm going to be there. I will be supporting you and the Lakers all the way through. Love you. Love your game. Hey, keep doing what you're doing, bro. Mm. Give him that. Yes, because we couldn't even get that shit. Just tell us that you love us and that you're always going to be there for us. And you're going to show us around L.A. That's all we wanted. Nigga just left. I think Magic could have gave it back. Okay? I got it. So allow me just to get this off my chest because I just don't get it. Maybe you can explain it to me, but over the... Skip, it's not that you don't get it. It's that, it's that you already have your own, your own perception of how things went in your mind, and you're going to keep pushing it. And to a degree, I understand it. Let me say this, man. And I may have mentioned this before. Back... Eight, nine, ten years ago, I used to really think that Skip Bayless was a LeBron James hater. And now I realize that about 90 percent, 95 percent of the shit that Skip has said about LeBron James is correct. Now, he goes overboard here and there. But for the most part, what he said about LeBron has ended up being true. Over the last two years, LeBron has gone full on, full tilt, public cursing. And I don't get yeah. it because he's yeah. always been. Skip Bayless is because he's trying to make sure that he caters to his constituency, that being the quote-unquote woke, super liberal, Marxist, pro-anarchy Negroes who believe that, you know, whenever there's any type of framework that equals oppression, you're not allowed to tell me to not speak a certain way. You're not allowed to tell me to refrain from certain ways of expressing myself because, you know, I'm being oppressed and therefore I have to cater to, you know, certain Negroes on the internet or on social media and things of that nature. To me, it's, it's, one thing to, it's one thing to express yourself a certain way on the internet or what have you. But when you're LeBron James and you have a television show on HBO and you're just talking just to talk nonsense and just to talk shit, it's like, come on, man. Have your stuff streamlined a little bit more. Know why you're saying certain things. If you're going to use certain words, it is what it is. I really don't care about that. But at the very least, have a, have a, cogent, uh, have a cogent point to make in your conversations. Uh, have a real dialogue where people are, are are disagreeing with you or trying to show you another perspective. LeBron does not even allow that. So that tells me that he's very insecure about his own thoughts. But once again, the reason why he's talking all that, you know, blah, blah, blah on his show to shop is because he's trying to cater to his little pro blackity black constituency who's saying, is, yeah, LeBron is keeping it real on his shop. You hear my man's saying whatever he want to say. It's like, come on, man. You can say whatever you want to say, but do you actually have something to say? been to me such a role model like i've always said he's the best role model in sports and he's got the charter school in cleveland yeah. and then that happens and it's just routine Tell what you're doing about because the charter <laughs> the, the charter school skip bayless is not lebron's school it just has his name on it that's all it is that's one of the few things that lebron actually has in common with magic johnson is that they're both basically just pitchmen. that's it they don't actually run anything 
They have business opportunities presented to them where they act as the mascot. LeBron is the mascot for the charter school, which actually is very obvious to me, was the brainchild of Nike Incorporated in conjunction with some of LeBron's other corporate sponsors. But he did not put any money down for that school. His job was just to stand in front of it with a microphone and act as if he's here to save the world or to save so-called black people. And he can't do any of that. He cannot even lead his team. How the hell are you going to lead black people? But, you know, it, once again, that's meant to cater to his wokey woke constituency on the Internet to make them believe that he's, quote unquote, down with the cause. That's why LeBron is constantly trying to align himself with Colin Kaepernick and Muhammad Ali. He just produced that little documentary of Ali on HBO. It was fun to watch, but I, I watched it and it, to me it was like it was like a YouTube documentary. Ninety five percent of the stuff in ninety five percent of the footage used in that Muhammad Ali documentary on HBO that was produced by LeBron and Maverick Carter is stuff that I've seen on YouTube about Ali. That's how I know that Muhammad Ali as a figure is new to LeBron James. You could tell that he's known nothing about Ali until about the last three years. Because he's acting like he's dropping this heavy documentary on Ali on HBO. And it's stuff that anyone who, who has ever really been interested in Ali already knew. There may have been five to ten minutes of footage in that, document, in that documentary that I've never seen before. Everything else I've seen. So the Muhammad Ali story is something that's been told over and over and, and over again. And nothing against Ali, but he was a sports figure. What I gave him credit for is that he was actually about what he talked about, unlike most of these corporate whores today, including LeBron James. But the Muhammad Ali story, to be quite honest with you, is overtold. We have to start moving forward and finding leaders that are actually going to help us change paradigms. LeBron James is not going to change any paradigms. Once again, he's a pawn of the corporatocracy. Barbershop. Hey, I got it, but it's public. It's on television. It, it's the usual the barbershop. Nobody's listening except those guys in the shop, and I get that. And I'll be the first to say, I'm no angel when I'm watching games, but publicly, I just I just don't yeah. curse because I just don't think it's real becoming of somebody of any stature, yeah. especially LeBron James. And I think of other guys, you know, with Dwayne Wade. I don't have a problem necessarily with the cursing. My thing is, it's obvious to me that he's, that he's talking a certain way, he's speaking a certain way to make sure that he, you know, he, he comes off as a quote-unquote real nigga. <laughs> I'm a real nigga like y'all. LeBron James, come on, man. Stop. You've had a silver spoon in your mouth. Like this dude, when he, come out, when he comes out talking about how much he struggled ever since he was a little kid and this and that, most of the struggles that he's had was because of his mother. Not because of how poor he was or how broke he was. He's been taken care of since he was 11, 12 years old. There are a lot of people who've never been taken care of at any point in their life. Dwayne Wade ever do this public? I don't think so. Would Steph or Clay do this? I don't think so. If you go to the other league with Larry Fitzgerald or Russell Wilson or... No, I had never heard, even off... I don't think I heard uh, uh, Fitz do that. But that, look, when I walk... I don't know how you... What about you? I walk into the barbershop the first... Well, Jenny, what'd you say? What do you mean, what about me? Oh, shit, speak however the fuck I want to speak. I use the F word, the S word, the B word. That's why we got so many letters in the alphabet. I use them all. I mean, shit. I curse on camera, off camera, on the show. And Skip better not say shit. He better not ever fire me. I promise you that. Because his here to be the next ball I spike. The first thing I'm looking for are kids and women. If there are no kids and women, well, I'm going to let it rip. Okay, that's fine. But again, you're not on television. Yeah. You're not on HBO. That might not right? let me come on there. Because there ain't going to be no kids and no women. So okay. I'll be able to talk okay. over the Okay, I, I got you. But, it, you know. Every two weeks, Shannon begs for the chance to be on, on LeBron James's show, and he still can't get on there. I hope that I hope that LeBron makes Shannon's dream come true. You know, matter of fact, I don't because I don't know how Shannon will be acting on that damn show. He might just totally play himself. <laughs> might be on the show just okay. So, Bron, what we gonna do about this relationship? Why you not answering my phone calls and my texts? <laughs> LeBron gonna be like, "Oh, uh, we supposed to be talking about the topic on the show? Yeah, the topic is us." And our relationship. And how you've been ducking me for, for years. Show me the love that I've been showing you. <laughs> you know, LeBron's kind of like a wannabe rapper, so it's like his rap. That's exactly what it is, Skip Bayless. Rappers coming out. Or I also think he wants to, to act younger, so it's more with the kids. That's, that, well, there's a bit of that as well. LeBron is 34 years old. He still tries to dress like he's 21. That's, there's a bit of that. But it's also that he's trying to cater to his wokey woke 
keep it real constituency that he has on social media. You want to be like Tom Brady? Oh, kiss my butt. Oh Listen, my God! Oh God! I, I didn't bring up Tom Brady because in Tom versus Todd, yeah, we heard a couple yeah, of words. Yeah, yeah, dropping the face left and right. Hyphenated word. You yeah, know that. different. Yeah. So I mean, Skip, he didn't get into that that strong. He didn't get to the you know the mofos. And well, the yeah, Skip Billy, you haven't get to them strong words like mofos and kiss my you know what and stuff of that nature. No words that I like to see. Let's give him credit. I mean, that, that, that might okay, be out of the pipeline. But we got F-bombs and SHs all over the yeah, place, yeah, yeah. right? I mean, that, is, is that like just, it's just where we are now, where yeah, everybody yeah. does that? I mean, Skip, I would love if our show was on HBO. So I can tell you how I really feel about you. I wouldn't even call you Skip, I'd call you Shit. Shit, Baylor. I mean, Skip, look, I grew up, my grandfather cursed. But do you think I was going to repeat what I heard him say? No. I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. Yeah, Skip, Baylor, my grandfather didn't play. You think I could have spoke like that back then? I mean, shit, he was fresh out of slavery. Them niggas didn't play. If I'd use a curse word, he had to, he'd have my back look like a subway map. Lines everywhere. What, what, what does LeBron say to his kids when they come home and one of those words spills out? I tell you, whatever gets what gonna spill out. What? He blew it out of his face. Okay. Well, Skip, look, we've had that problem with Brownie before. Brownie thought that he was a little bit too big for his britches, and we had to put him in place. But, you know, you didn't hear that from me. My grandfather said, I said, well, Papa, I heard you say it. What'd you just call me? Papa. Great. Guess what? That's right. I'm Papa. Papa can say that. And I'm sure LeBron James said, yeah, Brownie. <laughs> LeBron Sr. can say that. You can't. Okay. Yeah. LeBron Sr. can say that. Shannon Sharp can say that. Brownie Jr.? No. Keep it PC. Okay, is that what he'd say to the kids at the charter school? No, 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 I no, no. He's gonna say, y'all, ooh, guys, y'all doing such a great job. You're making me very proud. <laughs> okay, well, I hope yes, they are. Yes, And And I was, I think. <laughs> yeah, every about, every about five or six months, LeBron has to put out some, uh, some update on the charter school. But as Skip Bell is, is stating, he's making a relatively good point. You're on HBO, so I'm sure that some of those children are saying that as well. You do want to make sure that you moderate that to a degree. Or as you know, Shannon would tell Bronny, <laughs> as Shannon would tell Bronny Jr., keep it PC and keep it PG. He probably doesn't care anymore, but what does, like, Kia think about? I don't know if he still has Kia or oh, yeah, Sprite. Yeah, 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 oh, that's good. They, oh, they love Sprite. Yeah, they love know. Sprite. Love it. Okay. I love it. I love Mr. Sprite and Cranberry on the way up here yesterday. Like, more street cred? Is that more? Yeah, LeBron. Yes, that's a part of it, Skip Bayless. LeBron don't need no street Well, I don't think he does either. LeBron walking in. LeBron good. LeBron good anyway. <sighs> But he has multiple almost personalities depending yes. on where he is. Yeah. That's an interesting comment, Jenny <laughs> Jenny Taff. Jenny Taff says that LeBron James has multiple personalities. That's highly probable. Is yes. how he's acting, yeah. and that doesn't bother yeah. you. Yeah, no. Hell no. LeBron has 23 personalities to match his number on his jersey, and I love all 23. Jenny Taff, watch yourself. Because you, you have to be that way. Skip, I can't listen. I can't go in the barbershop. I, and I speak understand the barbershop, but this isn't really the barbershop. It's a shop. It's Real on talk. television. What you think, Jenny? I can talk call about it up. To the hairdresser. I, I, I can just. What you, <laughs> what you think, Jenny? Them talking about it at the hairdresser. I don't She's not Hallmark, Jenny. I can assure you. I don't no, think she uses I these think words. So. I just don't. I try, unless you get. Unless you see, I'm see. Okay, but yeah. I don't think she just regularly goes in the whatever shop you. Could, the hairdresser. She going to hair salon. Talking. Yeah. Okay, it don't really matter what Jenny Taft says at the hairdresser. So that's going to be basically it on that, brothers. We'll see what happens over the course of this Magic Johnson narrative. I do believe that this is not the last that we're going to hear from Magic Johnson. But because unless the Lakers are able to sign a major free agent, they're going to struggle again next year. And they're going to look for someone to blame. And do not be shocked if they try to, if they try to harken back to the controversial decision that Magic Johnson made to leave the team in such an abrupt way. But anyway, peace.